the horses whinny and bark by the grey ephemeral sea of the island winter. Mists and fogs circumscribe the path that runs along the cliffs and with menacing gestures hide all the certain way and give concrete form to the empty falling wastes above the rocks. The black stallion is hidden by cloudy wreaths of darkness and the white stallion is camouflaged by whitened globules of opacity. On such a day as this, who can point the real? Who describe the fake? The way to the rocks is long, falling with its own falling, continuing in its own treachery. On such a day as this, the unaccustomed path could lead to death so easily. Shall I take the path that leads to death? Shall my death be closed by mists as was my life? Shall the exit be in context with the play? For all my thought was always cast around by acres of opacity, and the black stallion and the white stallion fought always in the dark, and never saw each other face to face. Path to death and bliss, who shall lead me on this path? Is the black stallion ready for his master's saddle? Or shall the white stallion have the honour this misty morning? Who shall take me? Where shall either of them take me? Sure-footed or stepping in the wrong direction, who shall lead me and where? To the comfort of the rocks or to the ever-present pain of day and night and night? and day, death enclosed by life, or life enclosed by death, it's all the same to me. But who shall lead me? Who shall point the way? Melodrama is a frightful word to me. I would not take that path. Any other path will do, but that one is abhorred. If I must go to death, then let me go all unaware, as if the horse had stumbled in the mist-swirled dark and missed the path, and I without a thought or cry, remorse or pain, had fallen to the rocks. Not only in the other eyes of others must it seem so, but also in my eyes that see the act before it's done. I would not go with sickly lamentation and with glances backward to a sphere that, now remote, is now sublime. She took his arm in hers for me to see, for she could feel 
my heart and mind distend beneath the weight she puts upon my eyes, and any piece of paper might have burned within my gaze. Ice chinking in the glass, I smiled, and she smiled back, picking at a sausage on a stick. Her teeth were white, her skin was olive, and I was drunk. And after stumbling down the stairs, I could not think what I might think or say were I a man. And so I only laughed, for there was nothing else to do. And shall I laugh as I fall to the rocks? No, I shall not laugh. I shall shed a thousand tears. So what is wrong with melodrama? I have a cause and a heavy price to pay. Yes, a heavy price to pay for all my cause. With her half-snicker smile, she thought she'd break me down. She thought she'd send me deeper in the cups, from which, emerging in a daze, I should accuse her with my bleared eyes and faltering hands, reaching for a cigarette and trying to look composed. But I undid her, and I undid her snicker smile, and robbed her of her finest hour, in mine own indecision faltering, disregarding her little snicker drama, while I arranged my trembling fingers. But I know, I know, I know that even now I look the fool, waiting for a horse to throw me from the cliff, my head held high, my hair falling across my forehead, peering through the mist and thinking, is it now? Or thinking, I shall not fall. It is a morning of the island winter. I wonder that I am still alive to see this morning, to see this jaded morning, and to watch the gulls swooping across the island and crying bleakly over the landscape that to me is nothing but jaded rocks jaded shore, jaded breaking waves, that all my life is spent in lamentation is nothing, the merest nothing to me. Clouds revolve through the winter sky, build up, fade away on the horizon, drop in veils of rain and mist, or merely dissolve from ennui? Am I a cloud or a jaded rock sticking to the earth, 
or wandering about the sky aimlessly, drifting with the wind. I do not care. I do not care. I do not care. I am a cart drawn by two capricious horses.